So when I check that checkbox, what it does is at this point in time, it's just taking that face. So I can move my display just to show what that looks like. So we'll see that at the face level, this is what I've got. I've got that face. I stick it through that color override, and it isolates just the, um, you know, the actual skin color. And then after you see the facial features cut there, they're going to be cut if I move them. Let's just, for the sake of argument, move these guys over. See that they're going to be cut with that skin. And then now I'll stick my display back down at the bottom um, so that I can see what's going to happen at the end of the scene. So now I've done pretty much what I want to do with, with the face. And now just to talk a little bit more about what you would do when animating this, is um, you probably have a master peg on top of all of this, but generally, when you're animating, let's let's put a couple of keyframes on here. Um, actually, let's add a master peg. It's gonna make it easier. So I'll add my master peg, and I'll just make this a parent of the facial features group, a parent of the face itself, and a parent of these other elements. And you might want to group together into a peg um, the the hair elements, the curls that I've got there. Um, I just stick a couple of curls in there just for the sake of argument to show you how you could work with hair. Um, but you can, you know, be creative about the, the groups that you create by, by, by connecting things together with a peg. Now, if I order my network up again just to keep things organized, we'll be able to see a little bit better what's going on there. And sometimes, you know, the computer might order things in a way that isn't entirely useful to you as an individual, so you can definitely feel free to go back here and um, do some extra reordering yourself. So now I can take the, take the entire character here, collapse it under my main peg, and I can extend the exposure in my scene. And I'll just create a keyframe on the first frame with F6, and I'll go to a frame later on and create another keyframe and just show you how I can go here to a profile. And when you're animating, if you select a layer and you hit B to go up to the parent, it will select the next one up. And also, when you are working with pegs, it helps to have the peg selection mode turned on on your transform tool. Because what that does is when you click on the drawing, instead of selecting the drawing, it's going to select the peg directly. So it prevent, or it, it takes away one level of B that you have to hit. So in other words, um, when you have this off, you, hit, you touch it once, and you've got to hit B once to go to the peg, and B again to go to the facial features group. If you turn it on, it goes directly to the peg and you only have to hit B once to go to the group. So from here now I will modify that over there. Now of course this on its own doesn't look very exciting but you want to move the ear over, you want to move the hairline over. Oh and obviously I forgot to do something very critical here. You want to also um, make the hairline cut off with the face as well. And in this case I probably also want my hairline to be quite a bit bigger. It looks like I did it kind of uh, too small here. So I'm just going to select my um, hairline layer there and I'll make this a lot bigger because I just want it to be pretty big. The main important thing is that I have the curve looking the way I want it to look there, but I want, um, I want the drawing itself to be expanded out. And then what I'll do with my hairline is I can use that same, you know, the face, here we go, the face that I'm using the color override with to isolate the facial features, I can use the same one on the hairline. And in fact, I could also put my hairline in that same composite with the facial features directly. Um, let's try that first and see if that's going to work. So let's try to put this in my facial features group. And you see now that hairline is being cut off there. And, um, you know, obviously I might want to go back and adjust how the um, how how the uh, shape of the head is looking because his head is a little bit egg shaped here but but let's pretend that I love the shape of the head then now what I can do is from one position to the other I can animate the hairline there and in addition to that I can animate those um, drawings it looks like one of my drawings here is disappearing so oh yes um, it's because I have not extended the exposure on that one so also it looks like that curl may have not made it into yeah there we go I see it so it didn't make it into that peg so I want to make sure that it's connected into my master peg and now if I look from one to the other 
I still, to make this really look like a good movement, I want to animate the position of those curls as well. So you'll animate that curl forward, this one forward. You might even have some of these curls kind of, you know. Oh, and by the way, you probably should set your pivot points as well. I didn't bother setting any pivot points on this drawing, but you want to animate the, the position of those guys out like so. And uh, I think one, two, three, four. Oh, yes, so I missed one. So you definitely want to make sure that you get them all showing there or you'll notice it when you animate from one side to the other side. Let's uh, stick a pivot point on this one as well. Okay, so now I'll just animate that out like that. Maybe you even want to skew some of these things, you know, uh, probably just move that pivot point up there, but it's, uh, you might want to skew it a little bit and just be creative about how you're doing this, but um, at the end, the main thing is that you want to get that sense of things moving from one side to the other side. So um, now you'll also notice that there's a bit of an odd thing happening here where I can start to see the edge of this line. And the reason that that is is because when I drew my original head layer, if I go into the um, face, here it is, my face, if I take a look at this drawing, I drew this guy with a pencil line. And so because it's a pencil line, the stroke is actually filling up to the center of that pencil line. So to get over this, what you actually want to do is you want to convert that pencil line to a brush line, and then you want to take this whole image and flatten it. And what that does is it just makes that fill go to the edge instead of going all the way to the center. And now if you go back to your camera, you'll see that it's going to look a lot better at this point um, when you look at that animation from one to the other. And so that is pretty much it. Now um, maybe I might want to adjust um, a little bit more the, the position of, of these eyes. Like I might want to have those guys, and you, you might even want to scale these guys. You know, like this might be scaled, and I, I'm sorry I didn't set my pivot points properly, but um, you might want to have them scale um, scale up, scale up that. Oops, sorry. All right, let's just. Oops. Okay, I want to go up there. Okay, now I can move my pivot point there. Okay, so now from this peg, you might you might want to have this scaled up a little bit when it's in the front and then when it's moving over to the side you'd want to squish it in and probably move it forward something like that and um, actually I put that keyframe over here let's put that keyframe in the same frame as the as the rest of it so that it's subtle the thing is that when you're animating you want it to be subtle so you don't want it to look too crazy but um, you do want to do the same thing with the other eye because you'll notice the other eye now is not scaling so it just doesn't look quite as good but if I take the other eye and I'm just gonna um, really quickly shove my pivot point where it belongs and I will scale this one in now as well and I'll move that keyframe um, so that it's overlapping on the other side there just so that I have my keyframe all in the same place and now you see that scale scale happening. And since I overrode the overall positioning there on the second keyframe, I could take it even more. I could take it back again and I could move it a little bit more. Or I could undo that. Let's let's undo that move I did. So, I did the scaling on the eyeball and I could just go in here on the eyeball layer instead of overriding all of those keys and I can just put that scale for the eyeball on the other frame so now you get that animation happening here so that's what I want to do for this week um, I apologize for the artwork being a little bit um, quickly put together here but what I will do is as we go through this next week I can go through this in more detail and I can actually um, maybe show a few more advanced concepts but if you get these initial concepts and that's the main thing 
from here, you know, if you want to change the shape of the face, now that's something else. You can change the shape of the face by morphing from one shape to another shape to get a really full look on that. Um, or what some other people do is they'll break the head up into a couple of different pieces and then they can animate those pieces around to create a full shape. So, you know, there's a couple of different ways of accomplishing that and, and there's no right or wrong way. They're just different ways of doing it. But hopefully you can see just from a simple demonstration like this how the value is added to this. And um, next week I'll also show you an example that takes this a step further just so that you can see you know, what a final version of something that's done in this manner would look like. So thanks for staying tuned, and we'll see you next week.